Welcome to Ratio Scale Modeling. This is part two of Academies and Airfixes PBY 5A. And uh, this is a, a, a comparison video. Now, the initial idea was uh, to build these kits panel to panel according to the instructions. Um, that's not really going to work out that well, so I'm going to do page to page. So I'll start on page one complete that part of the build on one kit, then move over to the next kit and do page one on that kit and so forth. Now these builds are going to be straight out the box. I'm not going to be adding anything to them. I'm going to be using the paints that are specified uh, where possible. Now, there's some uh, paints that I don't have, so um, I couldn't do that. So it's going to be a true comparison of the kits. Now the um, Airfix kit, I've been told, is uh, the old 1964 uh, kit. So it's the older version of this kit. There is a new, newer version out there which I have built and um, I've got some good results with that. But this is the older kit. So it's uh, wise to keep that in mind. I also say these videos are going to be slightly longer because effectively I'm building two kits at the same time. So. Let's jump into this and see how well I get on. I'm starting off with the Airfix kit, and as you can see there, I just put up the page, and you'll see the little Airfix logo on there as well. So the first thing I have to make up is the mount for the front turret. Uh, this is a, a fairly simple exercise. Uh, the, the fitting's not brilliant on this. I had to press down quite firmly to get everything connected as it should be. If you want this turret to be rotating, be careful of your um, cement placement. Um, there is a danger of it um, fusing together when you don't want it to. It's quite tricky because the, the, the hole for it is uh, large and the, the cement will seep into it and um, seize everything up. So just be aware of that. My first colour is Rebel 08 Matte Black and immediately you'll see this as an alternative colour. It should have been the Humbrol 22 but I don't have uh, any of that. Uh, in my stock, so um, I'm going back to uh, the Revo, and this is for the gun that's going into the mount. Next, I'm using the same colour to paint the steering column. Before moving over to Humbrol 102 Army Green for the mount for the control panel. And then it's Humbrol 226 Interior Green. This is going to be the main colour for the inside. So I'm just painting the seats in this colour first of all before going on to the footplate. I should point out as well the interior is um, primed in, in white. I should have really primed this in grey. Um, that way I would have got a, a better uh, finish on the Humbrol paint. Um, but it just means that it's going to take one or two coats uh, to get it done. So I'm just going to start detailing the seats and that and I'm going to be putting on the black once more so that's the Rebel Aquacolor 08 matte black and that's for the cushions and uh, metal components on the seats. You, you can actually see some of this uh, workings inside the cockpit once everything closed up so it's worth doing even if you can only just see very small parts of it. I'm using here Rebel Aquacolor 05 white. Again, um, I haven't got the um, matte white in the Humbro. And I'm painting on here the instrument di dials. Now, generally, uh, Airfix give you a decal for the instrument panel. There's not one for this kit, um, so I'm having to paint it in. And I'm just basically making a series of little white dots, and then I'll go over it um, with a, a little black mark uh, to show a dial. It's probably not the... Um, most accurate thing in the world. Uh, I've probably got the colours wrong, but um, I just want the 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 panel to stand out a little bit more than it actually does. I'm using micro crystal clear here to attach the um, weapon. Now the, there is a, a a little part that just sits inside the weapon. You don't really need to attach your bi glue, but um, it's just for a uh, peace of mind with uh, me and. Um, and I'll use the, the same glue to attach the actual turret to the mount itself. Now this is where I've made my first mistake. Uh, you really should have uh, painted the uh, clear part of the turret before placing this on. 
it's not a big issue. Um, it was only later on I noticed I didn't do it um, before I closed everything up. So I took it off and, and painted it. But that's down the line and I'll show you that. The clay part actually fitted quite well um, onto the mount itself. Um, just with a little bit of white glue. Uh, once it's on, just uh, check it to make sure everything moves if you wish it to, to rotate. Um, I do, so um, as you can see there, it's moving quite freely. Next is to place the two steering columns on my handler in the way there a little bit. These parts are tiny, um, even when I zoomed in, um, you, you just get to see my hand, so there was no point in zooming right in. But th there's two little location points on this uh, panel to attach them, and the the location point uh, has got a nice depth there, so they will sit in there uh, without too much fuss. So I'll just hold up the camera so you can see um, the the little markings I made for the uh, panels. Next are the side guns. Um, they have their own independent mounts, which I'm, I'm working on here at the moment. The, again, these are very small, um, but uh, achievable. They, they just need a little bit more due care and attention to fit and a little bit more drying time. Don't be um, thinking oh, you can just throw it on and be done with it because the parts are so small and you want them to point at a certain angle as well I should add um, you, you, you do have to be careful while bonding them together I should add as well I decided not to do the gunners or pilots uh, or on this bills because the the molds were just were not good enough um, the the quality was very poor in fact so I decided not to try and attempt to do these so now that the gun mounts are made up, um, it's time to move on to placing the seats on. And like the steam column, the, it's quite a nice location point for these uh, to sit in. I'm now placing in the windows. Um, each uh, window frame has uh, got a, a thin bead of uh, white glue or the crystal clear glue. Um, the reason why I'm, I'm using the crystal clear is because it won't fog up the windows. It's as simple as that. It takes a, a little bit longer to dry than your normal cement. Uh, but your, your windows won't be fogged up by the fumes of the, your glue. If your cement, uh, if you've only got the um, normal uh, cement, place it on the surface and leave it for about a minute, maybe two, until the fumes uh, dissipate. That way you've got a better chance of your clear parts not fogging up. So it is doable without the white glue, of course. Um, there's just a little bit of a chance that your windows would fog up. So as you can see there, I'm placing in the uh, forward turret mount. Now, uh, as I said, I should have painted this before going in. Uh, I just didn't think about it. It just went completely out of my mind. So I've cemented it in, but by the time I noticed, um, I was still able to pull it out and, and deal with the painting aspect. Next to go in is the steering column. Now, I had problems putting this in here. The instructions weren't 100% clear um, where exactly the, it should go. So there was a little bit of uh, guesswork and dry fitting before I uh, decided on the exact position. And it took a little bit while to get it there and for it to set into place as well. And then the, the seat and floor go in next. Now the actual uh, side weapons, they're meant to go in after the seats, but I decided to leave them off because I'm going to be constantly turning this uh, fuselage over and there's a very real danger of the guns breaking. So I'm going to leave them off till near the end, but that's not how the instructions tell you to do it. I painted the other half of the um, fuselage and the there is another um, clear part that's got to go on at the bottom here, uh, like a little triangular window, and I'm placing that on the the fuselage side that hasn't got all the workings uh, attached to it yet. And it just goes in, there's a little framework on the plastic for it to sit in. I did slip a little bit um, when I was placing it in, so just be mindful of that, um, but it does fit quite well. I'm now switching over to the Academy one. And I'm starting off with the landing gear compartment, and it's getting painted in, in Tamiya's XF1 flat black. Uh, the majority of this build will be in flat black, um, but um, I'll, I'll change the, the different types of blacks as I go along. 
Next in user in time is X10 Gun Metal, and this is for the struts that hold the landing gear. And while all that's drying, just to show you the two contrasts, there's the Academy one, and the white one is the Airfix. Now the reason why I'm, I'm doing this, uh, so that you can see the actual differences in the fuselage themselves. So the length of each one is fairly uh, similar, maybe fraction out. But what I find most interesting on this is if I put the two halves together, obviously different capes, but the um, the actual different locations of the um, openings for the side gunners, um, one's further back than the other. Um, also, um, if you look at the locations for the the landing gear and uh, this little uh, window here is completely different uh, as then if you look at the actual cockpit uh, opening itself it's completely different from each other one's uh, a lot wider and um, longer than the other remember the white is the airfix and the grey is the academy so I found that hugely interesting it's back to the academy and the instrument panel does have a decal on this one, so I'm just placing that on now. And that's just done in the normal way, so a bit of decal solution, and then placing on the decal itself. The first part I'm making up is the um, struts for the landing gear. Now there's a couple of components to this, and each has its own dedicated location point. It's uh, quite difficult to see because it's all painted in black. Um, I was thinking about leaving it unpainted, assembling it, then painting it. But because I brush paint, um, it's easier to paint them before assembling them. Of course, if we were using an airbrush, I could assemble this and uh, then paint it afterwards. So that's the advantage of using an airbrush, but I really do not like using airbrushes. So the various uh, components went in quite well. Uh, as I said, the location points are nicely defined and um, they're able to sit in there without too much fuss. I would advise um, don't wait until each part sets though because you will have to uh, lay each part onto another part to form a sort of wedge shape um, uh, as you're building this. So it's essential that you're able to manoeuvre a particular strut down onto another one um, before it all completely sets. And the last part to go on to this um, part of the strut is the uh, main connecting pin that goes onto the, the wheel and that will just sit on. It's a little bit of delicate uh, manoeuvres to get it into place, to get it straight, but it's essential that you get it square on because uh, otherwise your wheels will uh, not fit properly. So now it's uh, time to paint the inner part of the fuselage and I'm using Tamiya's XF71 cockpit green for this. It's quite a nice colour and it uh, on the thin coat, it really shows up well on the grey primer. And that's the colour we're using for the entire inside of the fuselage, as well as all the uh, fittings as well. Next is to place the control uh, sticks on, or control wheels on, and that just goes onto a single bar um, on, on this kit. Uh, it's quite a delicate uh, process to place them on. Um, there's a, a very, very small contact point uh, for them to um, uh, attach to. So now we're moving on to the canopy, and as you can see here, I've decided to mask these uh, slightly off camera there, and I apologise, I didn't realise that at the time. So I'm just using very thin strips of masking tape to go over the lines. Now generally I will do these uh, free hands, but um, the, the lines are so faint on this, uh, it was better to use uh, masking tape. But as you can see, for the Academy one at least, it's a, a simple process of uh, masking up before painting. And once they're masked up, I'm going to be placing on some clear varnish. So that I'm using the Pledge Clear Polish uh, to do this. Now the reason why I'm doing this now is uh, to stop uh, paint bleeding. It just gives it a little barrier so the paint is not going to uh, bleed into your canopy. It takes a lot longer to do because there's a lot of drying time involved of course. Now it was at this point that I realised I hadn't painted the turret for the airfix uh, part. So I, I took that off and I'm going to mask this up uh, so I can paint it. And I'm going to be using 
Rebel Aquacolor 05 white. That's uh, the matte white or flat white. I've just put a, a little line of masking tape around the hard edge at the top and bottom before uh, painting in the uh, main line. There is going to be a strutzer line going up uh, the edges of this uh, turret, um, but I'll have to wait until everything dries before I uh, go into that stage. And it's the same process with the side canopies um, on the airfix as well. Now, I should point out, this uh, these canopies um, on the sides and the main canopy, which I'll go into uh, shortly, there's no markings on these, and I had to do a lot of guesswork to, to be 100% sure where these uh, lines would go. So um, I, I looked at a lot of photos and compared it with the Academy kit and things like that before deciding on where I should put all these um, framework paint, paint markings should go. And then it's back to the Academy and it's XF1 flat black for the markings on these uh, canopies. And the forward turret is uh, painted in the same manner, just uh, different lines painted, but um, same thing, masking tape, then the uh, clear varnish polish, and then of course at the end, the actual paint. And once it was dry, I was able to take the first set of masking tape off to see my lines, and uh, everything is working out okay. To mask the main canopy, it's a fairly simple process. I'm just taking one sheet of masking tape and placing it over the entire canopy. And I'll rub that in until every surface is uh, completely covered and all the creases are inside and ready to be cut out. And I do this just by going over it with the cocktail stick. And then with the new blade in my knife, I use my phone as a light to, uh, to shine through so I can see the markings 100% um, before I start making my cuts. Now it's essential you use a new blade to do this because you just want to have one pass only to cut these sections out. And it's onto the air fix canopy. Now the problem I've got here is there's no markings whatsoever on the actual canopy itself. Let me just move my hand out of the way. Um, so I'm having to uh, do a lot of guesswork here and again look at a lot of reference pictures to see how this is meant to go. Um, luckily I have my little cotton jig here um, that lets me cut tiny little squares out um, easily so that then I can just cut them out and place them on the canopy. And this is quite a, a long process, this took me a couple of hours to complete, just taking all these little pieces off and placing them on to the canopy. There's also a different in size as well, of course, if you remember when I put the two facial uh, together, you saw the uh, openings completely different size. But as I said, this is quite a long process. Um, I generally prefer, as I say, to uh, do these by hand, but um, I have no option here but to use the masking tape. And while the varnish is drying on the Airfix one, it's back over to Academy, and I'm just painting in the markings for the Academy one all in the FX18 black course. And then finally, it's back to Airfix and uh, painting in the markings using Rebel Aquacolor 05 flat white. Um, as you can see, um, I'm just painting in between the um, masking tape, obviously. Now, the um, markings seem to differ on the Academy one, but um, so I'm not 100% sure which one is correct. The Academy one, I went by the markings on the actual canopy itself. This one, I done uh, through research on photographs and other people's uh, models that they posted online. So I don't know which one's correct, um, but it is interesting to see the different um, styles and uh, markings on these two different, very different kits. So this is where I'm going to end part two. A lot longer video than I normally do, practically double the length that I normally like getting done. But um, I think it's important, I've been doing a comparison video to show um, both steps um, as I go along. Um, I did actually build these the way I showed you them. I didn't uh, build one, then go and build the other. I built these simultaneously, so when you see on the video it's switching over, that's exactly what I done, so almost like in real time. I think that was the only way to get a true comparison. 
So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other builds? If you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That way you'll be kept up to date with all my other builds. Hit the little like button. Don't be afraid to comment. And of course, you can share the channel. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.